Thank you very much, Katrina. Now, after the huge response we here at Newsroom received from airing our Dacha debate with the concerned young people of South Africa, we take the matter of legalizing cannabis a step further. Today, we are joined in Durban by Andre Duplessis from the South African Cannabis Working Group, the group who created the cannabis position paper that the late IP MP Mario Oriani Ambrosini handed to Parliament. And then in Pretoria, we're joined by Peter Yuko, spokesperson of the Central Drug Authority, who has also seen the position paper. They talked to us today about their views on making the drug available in South Africa. Very good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for making the time to join us. Morning, morning. morning Peter. If Hi, I Andre. If I can start in Durban uh, with Andre. Andre, you worked on this position paper. Just tell us exactly what the paper is suggest suggesting and then how it is suggesting cannabis be legalized in South Africa. Well, Evan, the position paper was something that we put together because um, the South African government had mandated the Central Drug Authority to create a position paper in 2004. Um, that wasn't forthcoming for various reasons. And then again in 2010, Parliament mandated the Central Drug Authority to produce another, well, to produce a cannabis position paper. That still hadn't been done by 2013, and we took it upon ourselves to do as much research as we could to find the stories regarding cannabis in South Africa and lay out cannabis as we, we could research and find and just put it into a position paper so that we could take this discussion forward. Um, as you may have noticed around the world that there's a large shift in <coughs> drug policy and cannabis legalization and we just wanted to bring South Africa up to speed with the international changes. Peter? In Pretoria, the paper's well, been presented to you. What are your views and position at this stage? Well, the Central Drug Authority's position is fairly simple. The fact is that cannabis, cannabis use is dangerous. It's a dangerous drug and there are definitely dangerous health implications. Those implications go further than just the patient. They spread into the community. Uh, very often people under the influence of cannabis commit crimes because they develop what you might call Dutch courage. But the Central Drug Authority has to make its decisions and its recommendations to ministers and to parliament based on evidence. We need facts. And at the moment we are designing some research documentation and trying to raise the funding to do the research so that we can gather our own evidence. That is not setting aside any evidence which Andre and his group has presented or which might be internationally available. But we'll look at the facts, we'll look at the evidence, we'll look at the health implications, we'll look at the mental dangers of cannabis and make some decisions in that regard and recommendations to Parliament. It's a slow process, but it's a process that deals with a dangerous drug and has to be considered carefully. Where then are the evidence that you talk about that cannabis makes people commit violent acts? Well, there are often reports of people... That's antisocial behavior, generalization. Where is the evidence? You talk about evidence. Where is the evidence that you talk about well, that make people violent? No, I said that there are some instances where people, users of cannabis, develop what they... They take the drug, and it's not dissimilar from alcohol. People do that as well, to develop some Dutch courage and then might commit so You're talking about alcohol, That's in my opinion, sir. Where is the evidence that cannabis makes people violent. You, you, you talk about you only work with evidence. Yes, that's correct. We will make our decisions, I said, on, based on evidence, real facts, not hearsay that people talk about. And I've just said that we will gather the evidence, but that includes things such as Dacha being a dangerous, mind-altering drug. So there is, there are indications and there have been evidence in courts and that sort of thing, and we'll gather it so that we have it in facts, not things that we've heard. Again, sir, it's, it's, very at, dangerous yes. what the, it's very dangerous what you're talking about. You talk about evidence and then you talk about you still have to gather the evidence, but it seems as if your mind is made up. I'm going to ask, I'm going no, to no, ask Andre no, to respond to you. Our mind is not made up. We are doing some research. Sure, sure. I've said to you, we are sure. developing our own research documentation and trying to find money to do the research. Correct. I also did say we will take okay. into account international evidence that is available. Okay. Um, could, Andre. Evan, could I just... Uh, 
deal with this dangerous claim. Um, and something that's very clear is that cannabis is non-toxic. There is no death that has been caused by cannabis and the Central Drug Authority is going to be hard pressed to show that the drug itself is toxic. The claim that cannabis is dangerous and may lead people to some form of psychological problems, the evidence based on that shows that <clears throat> less than 1% of the people that use cannabis may develop some form of psychological problem and as such this psychological problem was probably underlying before their cannabis use. Now the evidence that is quite apparent if cannabis did have a psychological impact on the society as a whole our outpatient rooms in our psychological care centers like Falkenberg and Grundakis would be filled with many more patients than they currently are. And I, I have to question the Central Drug Authority's assumption that this is why this drug was made illegal. That, no, that, that's not why this drug was made illegal. The cannabis was made illegal in South Africa. The first law was in 1887, made by the <coughs> RAG report in KwaZulu-Natal, and it specifically used very racist terms. Now, um, I did a request for a clip to be shown about Mario Ambriosini, where he very specifically pointed out that cannabis has been used as one of the tools of generalized depression and social control in South Africa. Now, it's not just in South Africa that cannabis was used racially to control people. That was the initial reason why cannabis was made illegal. The after-the-fact scientific justifications came well after the fact, and in fact, they have been proven to be not correct. Um, they've been debunked. If there was more psychosis caused by cannabis, we would have many more psychosis patients, which we don't have. Andre, I'll stop you there. We'll have a look at that video that he's talking about, Mario Ambrosini, uh, talking about this issue uh, some time back. For too long, that which has been beneficial has been condemned. And in condemning the plant, there you condemn the people. As one of the tools of generalized oppression and social control, the liberation of the plant is the liberation of the people. It is one of the many victimless crime to put a folk in jail for the use of marijuana. If there is no victim, there should be no crime. And there is Mr. Yuka, if I can come to you. Yes. What is your, what is your position regarding sugar? It's a constant question throughout this debate that's come up. The Central Drug Authority, what's your position on sugar? We don't have a position on sugar. We've never discussed any position on sugar, and the same applies to salt and all sorts of other things. Exactly. But then why are, the so, things, why are you then so against the legalization of cannabis when it's proven to be a lot less dangerous than sugar when abused? Well, we, we've never said that we're against the legalization of cannabis, and I never said that cannabis was toxic, uh, toxic as Andre asserted. You mustn't put words into our mouths. The Central Drug Authority uh, realizes that there are arguments both for and against, and we have a neutral position until we have sufficient research to satisfy ourselves to make a recommendation to ministers and to Parliament. How this long will that process that then take, sir? I can't answer that question. It could still take a number of years, but there's three positions that you could take. One is the status quo, and I have no idea about social control use of the drug, and it's, it's irrelevant in today's times. We must look at it as it is today. So status quo is the one position. Decriminalization, as Mario suggested in his little speech, is another option, and complete legalization is the third option. But the fact is that right now, Medical marijuana or marijuana for medical use is available. You make an application to the MCC through your doctor and it can be made available. There is a process and it might not be easy, but it is available. So we don't want to jump the gun and take a very quick position on do we make it available for medical use and do we decriminalize it. It is available for medical use. And there are dangers to the use of DACA that cannot 
be denied. Smoking anything is going to cause respiratory diseases. We know that it does alter the mind in certain ways, and we need to get our definitive research as it affects us in South Africa, and then also, as I said, take into account the data which is available internationally. Thank you, Mr. Yuko. Andre, if I can just ask you, the Cannabis Working Group is or have been engaged in discussions with the Central Drug Authority. Has this been fruitful at all? What is your experience? Even let me be straight with you. Look, the Parliament did mandate the Central Drug Authority, whose job it is to come up with the cannabis position paper, to, to draw up a cannabis position paper. And the first one was expected in 2004. By 2010, when the position paper was still not forthcoming, they, Parliament asked again for the CDA to produce their position paper. So, yes, while I hear Peter Yuko saying that they're going to be investigating things, I'd just like to make something clear. When we presented our position paper, there was emails to and fro that the CDA would engage us in open roundtable discussions. But quite frankly, Peter, it's almost a year and um, the SABC itself is doing a much better job at producing roundtable discussions than the CDA has been in even just starting the roundtable discussions. Now, <clears throat> The harms, I understand that the CDA is going to investigate the harms, but it's been 14 years since they were meant to have produced a, a position paper and we're still waiting. The SABC is doing a better job than that. So Peter, if I've got to ask you, along with what Evan has asked you, you know, how much longer is it going to take the CDA to assimilate and read the knowledge that we made available for you. We, we effectively did your job for you, and now the SABC is doing your job for you. How much longer is this going to take, Peter? Please respond, sir. Well, yes, certainly, Evan. Andre, you didn't do your research for the Central Drug Authority. You developed a position paper with a group of people who have a predisposition to a view on cannabis use and abuse. And that document Peter, has been if you look at if you look at the front the page of the central drug authority, well, if you look at you know, the front page of the position paper, you see it was addressed Andre, for the and I can't central look at any drug authority. While you are talking to me, I did make it very clear. Peter, you should have read it already. Won't. You've had it for a year. Andre, you should have read it for know, already. And on the front right, page, I'll you'll note that we did actually make it for the central drug authority. Yeah, no, sure. Peter, okay, let me ask you a question. Because you're making all sorts of claims with regard to how dangerous cannabis is and why it needs to be controlled. Peter, have you yourself experienced cannabis in any form? Have you grown a plant? Have you smoked it? No, I have not. It would be... It would be stupid to assume that I have, but Andre, you mustn't put... Because if not, Peter, I'm taking ideas. sex advice from a virgin. Okay. You know that... I don't have to use or experience cannabis in order to know what the dangers might be. There is research available, and I'll repeat. The Central Drug Authority... Yes, and, and what about the benefits? For your research. Well, uh, Evan has asked you for your research that, you ba that you're claiming on. Now, what I'd like to say, Peter, is I have no, experienced no, Andre, Evan, cannabis... Please, can you stop, Andre, so that I can answer that question? I didn't say that we have research. I said very clearly, we are developing a research document which will ask the questions, which will provide answers that we seek to find regarding the benefits or the harms caused by DACA, regarding the advantages of maintaining the status quo or decriminalizing or legalizing and all those things. We have not got any research of our own yet. I did say we are looking for money to do that research. Now, okay. for a, is, a person like Maria Ambrosini to have used DACA, it's available for other people who want it through application for the MCC. So the Central Drug Authority doesn't see any real need to make an unprecedented, unwise, hasty decision in making recommendations of what might be good or bad for DACA, we, or legalization or decriminalization of DACA. We take a neutral position and we'll look at the research. The position paper that has been presented by the DACA or the Cannabis Working Group is their view of what might be required. There are counter views, and if you look at countries around the world, some co uh, counties and states in America have legalized the sale of DACA and, and their shops that do it. Uh, Portugal and the Netherlands have really soft systems of dealing with cannabis and all sorts of other drugs. And I think we need to examine those systems. But until we've looked at it all, 
we won't make some decision. To try and obfuscate the argument by laws that were made in the 1800s and say they were designed for social control is totally irrelevant. We know there is sufficient evidence to indicate that Dacha is and can be dangerous. We also know a fact in South Africa, it is available for medical use. So there isn't any great haste to make an unwise, ill-considered decision and recommend to Parliament about what may or may not be done or what should and should not be done. Thank you, sir. Thank you okay. for, some, for a wonderful summation of your position. Can you respond to that in, ab in about a minute, uh, Andre? Thank you. That's what we have left. Y yeah, sh sure. Um, if, if cannabis was a available for use from the Medicines Control Council, believe me, Urban, it takes as long to get an appointment with the Medicines Control Council as it does with the CDA. It took me over six months to get an appointment with the Director General and in fact, it took the public protector's persuasion before I could get that. In the meantime, Mario Ambrosini, who had also made an application, didn't get his medicine. He managed to get it after I made a few phone calls and we made an arrangement so that he could get his medicine outside of the slow period, delivery period, that government seems to work with. Now, Eben, this is something that we, we're getting way laid on. We need to take the discussion much forward. You know, Peter and I, we do the South African National Cannabis Working Group and the Central Drug Authority, we do have overarching common points, common ground, where we want to protect the young and the vulnerable. We want to take control of drugs. We don't want drugs available in school. We want to reduce crime. We want to improve health and security and development. And most importantly, we want to provide good value for money with regard to controlling drugs. At the moment, we've got drugs being controlled by a flat-out ban based on the Medical Controls Council scheduling system that cannabis is as bad as heroin and cocaine, and in fact, they've just made an amendment which makes white pepper as bad as heroin and cocaine. Um, they've made beta carophylline and all its esters and ethers and sub-homologues um, also a Schedule 7 substance. So all that white pepper on your table is now just as bad as cocaine. But that doesn't detract from the problem that children at school still have cannabis available to them. We need to take control of the market. Prohibition didn't work because it left the management of the drug situation in the hands of the police. It was written off yep. by the Medicines Control Council as being dangerous. For whatever yep. reasoning, we're still waiting for that evidence from the CDA and the MCC. And Thank you, Peter. Now, uh, thank you, Andre. We're running out of the, time, unfortunately. Sure. Thank you very much, both of you, for... Uh, a uh, very stimulating debate on this on this matter, Mr. Yuko. Yeah, I must just comment. Please, would would Andre not throw nonsense into the thing like uh, Tuli Madoncella and the uh, public protector putting pressure on the central drug Peter, authority? Peter, I've never heard. No, gentlemen, Peter, we've run out of no, time, unfortunately. Peter, need to Can we take this matter offline? Real health issues, and that is alcohol and nicotine and dacha is just part of the mix, and we will pay attention to it in good time with evidence. We hope Even it doesn't before. take another 14 years for the evidence to be gathered, Mr. Yuko, but thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Andre. We'll continue this discussion on SABC News in the weeks and months to come as South Africans are voting with their, with their mice online. They want this debate to be continued, and we will do so. Thank you for giving us the position paper and the position of the CDA on this matter.